Hi students, today we are going to learn how to draw polar curves. To draw polar curves, if we know beforehand the symmetry of the curve, our work is reduced to half. Now, what are symmetries? Let's see. If we are given a curve in R and theta, that is the curve is given in the polar form and we replace our R and theta in the curve by R minus theta or minus R pi minus theta and the curve's equation remains the same. We say symmetry about x-axis. If R theta is replaced by R pi minus theta or minus R minus theta, we say and the curve remains unchanged, we say it is symmetrical about y-axis. If on replacing r theta by minus r theta or r pi plus theta, the curve remains unchanged, we say it is symmetrical about the origin or the pole. Now, does that mean we have to memorize all these values? It's not needed. We can always form this chart on our own. Let's say we are given a point with the coordinates r theta and the point is in our first quadrant. If we move that point in the clockwise direction, the same angle, then the coordinates will become r minus theta because radial has not changed but the angle is now minus theta as we moved in the clockwise direction. So the point P is now in this fourth quadrant and its coordinates are r minus theta. Now, if the same point r theta is pushed back, it will reach the third quadrant. What has happened in this process? Our r has moved in the opposite direction as r is the directed line. Its sign now becomes minus but angle did not change because we did not move. So the coordinates of that point in the third uh, quadrant are minus r theta. If we see the same point in the third quadrant also has the coordinates r pi plus theta because if r pi r theta is moved an angle pi it will reach the third quadrant so its coordinates will become r pi plus theta push it back, it will be minus r pi plus theta. This way we can fill up all the values. So how do we sketch the curve? We give values to different values to theta and we get different values of r and then we plot them. For plotting, then how many theta values should we take is the big question. Here in this chart we have shown some common angles, pi by 6, starting from pi by 6 to 2 pi by 3, coming to 11 pi by 6 and 2 pi. Now, does that mean that we have to take all the angles? Not necessarily. When we have symmetry about the x-axis, it is enough to take angles from 0 to pi. So, eight values from 0, then these three values or in fact 9 values including pi by 2, then coming to pi. It is enough to take these values for symmetric, symmetry about x-axis. For symmetry about y-axis, to plot the curve, it is enough to take values from 3 pi by 2 to pi by 2. Or we can say from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Let's take some examples. We'll start with circle. In the most simple form, circle is represented by the equation r is equal to a. Here a is the radius and the center of the circle lies on the pole or the origin. r is equal to 2 is one of the examples. We can see that circle satisfies all three symmetries. If we take a is equal to 2, the radius of the circle will be 2. The second Type of circle is r is equal to a cos theta. Let's take a particular example r is equal to 3 cos theta. Here we can see that this 3 represents the diameter of the circle and we know that as 
it is a curve which has cos function. The curve will lie on the right side of the y-axis. Another thing, this curve is symmetrical about x-axis. We can see that if we replace r theta by r minus theta in this curve, r is replaced by r, theta is replaced by minus theta. Cos of minus theta will remain cos theta, cos is an even function. So my curve remains the same, r is equal to 3 cos theta. So it is symmetrical about x-axis. It is enough to draw the curve from theta value 0 to theta is equal to pi. And the shape which we get, we will replicate and complete the circle. Now what happens if the curve is r is minus a cos theta? This minus sign tells us that now the curve is on the left side of the y-axis. Now why does that happen? We know that 3 is the diameter. When we take theta is equal to 0, cos 0 will be 1 and our r becomes minus a. r is positive in this direction and the same r is negative in this direction. So our curve is here. This is also symmetrical about x-axis. Take the example of r is equal to a sine theta. Now we have sine theta. If r is equal to a sine theta, at a is 3, then we can see that this curve is symmetrical about the y-axis because when we replace r theta by minus r minus theta, the equation of the curve remains the same. The curve lies above the x-axis and this is so because whenever the curve has sine function, curve will always lie above the x-axis or we can say its diameter will coincide with the y-axis and because of symmetry it is enough to plot from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and we will replicate it. The next curve is r is minus a sin theta. In this case r is minus 3 sin theta this particular example. This means now the circle has turned and it has reached the, uh, it has come down and it is below the y-axis. So whenever a curve has sine function then it is above the x-axis. Whenever a value is positive and if the a value is negative it is below the x-axis. If the curve has a cos function, it is either on the right or left of the vertical axis depending on whether A is positive or A is negative. Let's come to another type of curves called the Lemaisons. The general equation of Lemaisons is given by R is equal to A plus minus B cos theta or in the sine form, it is r is equal to a plus minus b sine theta, where a and b both we take to be positive. The ratio a by b decides the shape of the curve. If the ratio of a and b is less than 1, then it's a limousine with an inner loop. We'll take this curve, r is equal to a plus b cos theta. As a particular example, if r is equal to half plus cos theta, we can see that a by b is half. If we give different values to theta, and theta is equal to 0, r will be 1.5, which means that my radial is 1.5, you can see in the graph. At theta is equal to pi by 3, which means that the radial is making an angle of 60 degrees. The r value is 1, so radial will be of length 1. And when theta is pi by 2, r value is 0.5. We substitute theta as pi by 2. This will be 0, r will be 0.5. Curve is meeting the y-axis at 0.5. At pi, the value of r is minus 0 0.5. Because cos of pi will be minus 1, so we get r is minus 0 0.5. r was 
positive. It is positive as we move in the anti-clockwise direction. So here it is plus 0.5 at pi. But value is minus 0.5. So we shift it back and this gives us the point at our value at pi. So this part of the curve is traced for all angle values from pi by 2 to pi. And it is enough to draw only this much of the figure. That is, starting from here, we move here. See how the curve is being formed. It comes here and then we replicate it because we can see the curve is symmetrical about the x-axis. It's cause function. So we see that the curve rests on the right side of the y-axis and it's this length will rest on x-axis. What happens when r is a minus b cos theta? If we take r is equal to half minus cos theta as a particular example, by giving different values to theta, we get different values of r. And we will be getting this shape of the curve. You can see that in this case, the curve has turned. Now the curve is on the left of the y-axis. The curve is symmetrical about the x-axis. So how was this curved? This curve shaped, we can see. When theta is 0, our value is minus 0 0.5. So at theta is equal to uh, 0, r is positive 0 0.5 in this direction. When we push it back, it is minus 0 0.5. Now, this curve starts from here and it will trace this part. When we reach pi by 2, it will be half and then it will complete this half. So, curve is traced starting from here like this and then we replicate it. What happens when r is a plus b sin theta? For that, if r is half plus sin theta, as a particular example, we see such a curve is symmetrical about the y-axis. So it is enough to take the values from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and the curve will be plotted. We can see it is a curve in sine function. So it is above the y-axis and it's this main um, r lies on the y-axis. What happens when r is a minus b sin theta? If we take this example where r is minus, uh, sorry, r is 0.5 minus sin theta, all we have is it's the same curve, but plus sin theta has become minus sin theta. The curve has turned. Now it is below the x-axis. Some part of it is, of course, in the first part, but this is the shape of the curve. And it is symmetrical about y-axis. What happens when the ratio of A and B becomes 1? Then we get a particular type of curves. We call them cardioids. In this example, if we have R is equal to 2 plus 2 cos theta. Now here we can see A upon B is 1. If we give values to theta, we have taken these five values starting with our theta is equal to 0. At theta is equal to 0, r is 4. At theta is equal to pi by 4, that is somewhere here, r value is 3.41. This length will be 3.41. At theta is equal to pi by 2, when we put theta is equal to pi by 2, it becomes 0, r is 2. We can see that here. At theta is equal to 2 pi by 3, r value is 1, so it is somewhere here. And at it becomes 0. As the curve was symmetrical about x-axis, we have replicated and we get a heart-shaped curve which we call cardioid. Another type of cardioid, r is equal to a 1 minus cos theta. We, let's take, we, uh, let's say we take another example, r is equal to 2, 1 minus cos theta. Here, this curve will be symmetrical about x-axis. 
How is it different from the previous one? There we had R is 2 1 plus cos theta. Now we have R is 2 1 minus cos theta. Only difference is now the curve has shifted to the left of the y-axis. It is again symmetrical about x-axis. So we'll draw half of the curve. The curve r is equal to a 1 plus sine theta. Now the function sine is there in the curve. So when we plot, let's say we are plotting r is equal to 2 1 plus sine theta. It is enough for us to take values from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and then we will replicate it. If we take theta is equal to 0, we can see r is 2. Theta is equal to pi by 2, r is 4. Theta is equal to pi, r is 2 because it is the same radial which is moving. So we are writing it at as 2, r is equal to 2. And at 4 pi by 3, the angle will be somewhere here. Our value is 0.26. So this part of the curve is traced. Theta is equal to minus pi by 2, our value will be 0. We can see sine function, so the curve is above the x-axis. R is equal to a 1 minus sine theta. What happens when sine has a negative uh, sign here? Sine theta has a negative sign. We have drawn R is equal to 2, 1 minus cos theta. Look at the graph. Now it is the major part of the curve is below the y-axis and the curve has been inverted. It is symmetrical about y-axis. What happens when a by b value lies between 1 and 2? In that case, we get dimpled limousin. Four dimpled limousin are shown here. This is, we'll start with uh, sine theta. If my curve has sine theta, the dimpled limousin will be above like this. If it is minus sine theta in the curve, the major part of the curve will be below the x-axis. If it is cos theta, major part is to the right of the y-axis. And if it is minus sine theta, the major part of the curve is towards left of the y-axis. Let's see some examples. R is 1.5 plus cos theta. Now, this curve we can check is symmetrical about x-axis. So, it's enough to plot from 0 to uh, theta values we'll take from 0 to pi. Here, we can see for different values of theta, for theta is equal to 0, r is 2.5. For theta is equal to pi by 2, it is 1.5. Please ignore this t. For theta is equal to 2 pi by 3, that is, it is somewhere here, the angle our value is 1 and for theta is equal to pi, r becomes 0.5. So this distance is 0.5. We get half the shape. We will just invert it to get the other side. And this is known as a dimpled limousin. How are these two curves different? See in the other example, we have a negative sign. So now the curve has inverted. It is now towards the left side more towards the left side that is major part of the curve. What happens when a by b value is greater than equal to 2? Because all other cases we saw, a by b is 1, a by b lies between 1 and 2. Now a by b is greater than equal to 2. In this case, we get oval limousons. Some oval limousons are shown here. This, from the shape itself, we can no, this has a cos function uh, in the equation. This also has a cos function but with a minus sign. Here we know it is a sine function. Major part is above the y-axis. Here we know as the major part is below the y-axis, it is a sine function with a minus sign. Some examples, r is equal to 2 plus cos theta. We can see here this is our oval limousin minus 2 plus sine theta. This is also an oval limousin, but because the sine is negative, major part is above the y-axis. Let's move on to another type of curves, the rose curves. 
Now, Rho's curves have general equation as r is equal to a cos n theta or r is equal to a sin of n theta. Where a is not 0 because if a is 0, we get the pole r is equal to 0. And n is any integer. n has to be greater than 1. If n is 1, we get a circle. So, in case n is given, the rows will have 2 n petals. And the length of the petals will be given by a. If n is odd, the rows will have only n petals. So, for even, they are doubled, the number of petals. For odd, the number of petals remains the same. If cos of n theta is there in the curve, then it will start from the horizontal axis, that is the petal will lie on the x-axis. And if there is sin n theta in the curve, then they start from the first quadrant. Some of the examples are given here. We can see n value is 3. So, we have 3 petals and n was odd. Symmetry, we can check. It is symmetrical about x-axis. When we give different values to theta, we get different values of r. On plotting, we get these leaves. At theta is equal to 0, we can see r value is 2. At theta is equal to pi by 4, that is when it is this, r value is minus 1.41. So our radial has come down. So our curve has started from here, it comes down here, it will go up, it will take this route and then complete. Come to r is equal to 2 cos of 4 theta. Now n is 4, so we have 2 times 4, that is 8 petals. The figure is shown here. Some examples are given here. r is 2 sine of 3 theta. We have 3 petals. R is 2 sine of 2 theta, so we have 4 petals. R is 2 sine of 5 theta, so because this is odd, we have only 5 petals. The last type of curve we are going to study is lemniscates, figure of 8 or propeller. These curves have the equation R square is equal to A square cos of 2 theta or R square is equal to A square sine of 2 theta where a value is not 0. Lemnus gates containing sine function will be symmetrical to the pole, while lemnus gates containing cos function will be symmetrical to the all the three axes, that is all the three symmetries it will have. It will be symmetrical about the polar axis, symmetrical about the y axis, theta is equal to pi by 2 and the pole. You can see here also for cos curves, where the cos appears, the loop will lie on the horizontal axis. It curve starts from here. The sign they will be in the first quadrant. Now, what about a curve r square is equal to minus sine 2 theta? This minus sign now creates a doubt in our minds. Whenever we give different values to theta, and we have a minus sign here, and we find the square root of r, we will be getting complex values because r square is a negative value. When we take square root, it will be root of a negative number, which is not allowed because we are dealing with real numbers, not complex numbers. So what happens? We can see that all values of theta from 0 to pi by 2, that is in the first quadrant. In such case, sign remains positive. Right? If sign is positive, then R square is minus of some value, which is giving us a problem. So we will not take any value from 0 to pi by 2. This quadrant we ignore. When we take values from pi by 2 to pi, we know that sign will be negative. So, negative value into negative will give me r square is positive. And we can find all the 
square roots of r. That same is the case in the fourth quadrant also. Sine values are all negative and that is the reason that the curve is in second and fourth quadrant. Let us see what changes the shapes and size of all the curves. We'll start with r is equal to a sine of n theta. When we make a change in the theta value, the shape changes. When we change, with a change in a, uh, in the length, this value, then the length increases or decreases. We have some examples here. Let's fix a to be 1 and we change our n value. If we change the n value, r is equal to sine theta we know is a circle. r is equal to sine 2 theta will give me rose petals. And because it is even 4 rose petals, r is equal to sine of 3 theta gives me 3 petals because this is 3. If we take r is equal to sine 4 theta, we will be getting 8 petals. So, the change in n changes our shape and a value will give increase or decrease in the length. Let's take the example of r is equal to a plus minus b cos theta or r is equal to a plus minus b sin theta. If we take a to be 0, what do we get? We get circles. If a is changed and b cos theta is fixed, we fix this value and we are going on changing a, then the curve's size increases or decreases. We can see here, our a is changed and b cos theta is fixed. Here we have cos theta, here we have cos, here we have cos. Only we are changing these values, 1, 2 and 3. See, from a cardioid, it changed to a dimpled or rather oval because uh, it will be a dimpled cardioid. No, it will not because for dimpled cardioid, a value should be less than 2. So, it's an oval shaped cardioid. And for a is equal to 3, we get another shape of a curve, oval cardioid. What happens if A is fixed? Now, in all these three cases, we have fixed A is equal to 1. And B is changed. Okay, cos theta is also fixed, only B value is changing. So, here B became 2, here B became 3. What happens? The loop size changes. It increases or decreases depending on what we have here. What if N is changed in these curves? r is equal to 1 plus cos theta, r is 1 plus cos 2 theta, r is equal to 1 plus cos of 3 theta. You can see that in this case, and a was fixed all over. We see that this gave us a cardioid. We are familiar with this. r is equal to 1 plus cos of 2 theta. Now, we know that in case of r is equal to cos of 2 theta, we have these two loops. Alright, one is just adding to that, so it is giving us our length of this. And for r is equal to 1 plus cos of 3 theta, we get 3 loops here. Thank you for watching.